Well, a very good calm Sunday morning to everybody in here. So we have something to celebrate the beginning of Holy Week this week. And this is the day that the Lord has made to let us rejoice and be glad in it. And you may be hearing some noise coming from above up here. And depending upon which one it is, it's either the guy's doing construction or the spirit is moving with you. So I'm going to go with the latter. I like the latter myself. So well, welcome. We, uh, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Uh, today is the official kickoff, Palm Sunday, for Holy Week. Uh, we will be having a Monday, Thursday service. Monday, Monday, Monday. <laughs> Monday, Thursday service uh, in here, so, and we kind of need to talk about that a little bit after the service this morning here, and then obviously next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we're uh, going to have a break of the fast, and we're planning to do that at 8 o'clock in the morning, so we'll have breakfast in here, uh, and we need to talk about that after the service as well, so we can kind of make a game plan Yes, biscuits and gravy are on the menu already, so. <laughs> uh, but we have a, a couple other food allergies and things that we have to accommodate for as well, so we want to make sure that we have everything balanced out for both Monday, Thursday, when we have our uh, meal together in here, and also the, for Sunday. So, a lot of good things uh, going on, I think, in the city and everything. We're, we're kind of seeing a turn uh, of as spring comes through we're seeing a renewal we're seeing kind of a renewal of the spirit is what i think as well and uh, i was up in madison wisconsin this week working and uh you know they they have just had a myriad of, of just terrible things going on up there in, in madison over the last year and uh the protests that they've been having up there are very very violent and there's been a lot of stabbings and shootings and a lot of violence going on up there so kind of want to lift them up in prayer today as we're thinking about things um, a lot of the larger areas are, are having a lot of violence going on in, in the world today and so we kind of need to lift those kind of things up as we're going through our prayers each and every day we we want to lift up these large metropolitan areas um, because there seems to be a, a concentration of violence there of course, with a lot more people there, you're going to see a lot more of those kind of things going on. But uh, those are some of the things that I wanted to bring attention to today. And as we start coming through and getting ourselves ready for worship this morning, just kind of put ourselves in, in uh, that kind of hopeful expectation to try and lift these people up and to kind of fight them in the name of the Lord as well. Uh, in addition, we've got uh, Orange Track in two weeks. Um, which is so, a busy Holy Week, and then Orange Track, and then in May, coming up very quickly, we've got to set our date yet for our next movie, so we're looking forward to doing that as well. Um, I hear the song Big House in my head from Audio Adrenaline right now, as God is preparing those rooms for us, and these, um, but it's just, it's just I, I'm getting it as a joyful noise, as a, kind of as a, intro to the Holy Week as well. So let's go uh, and prepare for worship this morning. Gracious Lord, we enter into your presence this morning with thanksgiving. With joyous hearts we come and eager expectation of what this week brings to us, Lord. The, both the sadness and the great good news at the end of the week. Lord, we come before you today and we just submit ourselves to you holy and fully into your presence today. Open our minds and our ears, our eyes to see the wonders and the glory that you give to us, the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. Ready our hearts today to receive your message and to be able to live that message out day to day with you in your presence. Lord, we ask upon the Holy Spirit to come upon us this morning. Reside within us, Lord, and just Help purify us today as we uh, accept and hear and understand your message as you reveal it to us today. Thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that you give us each and every day. For this church and this church family and our friends, we lift them all up to you. And any of the prayer concerns that we had 
Lord, we lift them up to you in your care and comfort today. And we ask that we claim these things as a victory in Jesus' name. We bring these before you in prayer and petition, Lord, with eager and earnest hearts to you. And we know by your word, which is all true, that you will hear our petitions and you will answer these prayers. We just pray to you and thank you for that this morning. In your precious and holy name we pray. So our call to worship this morning comes from the Psalms. And this is going to be responsive reading. So you're going to see where Terry and I read a passage and then you respond. And the response will be, Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Say it with a lot of energy this morning. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. And all who fear God say, his love endures forever. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. With the Lord on our side, what can we fear? What can humankind do? Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. We shall triumph over those who surround us and stand in confidence in the Lord our God. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God. Hosanna to the highest. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Praise be to God. Amen. So as I said uh, a little while ago, today is the start of Holy Week. And this week is right before we celebrate Easter and Resurrection Sunday which is a joyous time and it is, it is a blessing for us as Christians to be able to celebrate the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ. During this time, many churches take a time to pause and remember the suffering and death of Jesus through the various traditions and worship services as we're going to start today in Palm Sunday and through with the Monday, Thursday service ending in Easter Sunday. But see, at the same time, it's so easy to be focused on the celebration and the pageants and the musicals and all those kind of things about the long-awaited king on Palm Sunday and the resurrection of Jesus on Easter that we totally miss the suffering and the humiliation and death that are also all part of Holy Week. In fact, when was the last time that you spent this week reading about the events that took place prior to Jesus' death and burial and the resurrection. It's important for us to understand those things, to understand how glorious the resurrection truly is. Mark mentioned it's so important that we place the hope of the resurrection and the promise of new life against the background of death. As you walk through the shadows and darkness of Holy Week and Good Friday, only then do you really grasp the horror and the magnitude of sin and its consequences. Only then can you fully understand the light and hope of Easter Sunday morning. And I was telling Mark as we came in this morning early just to, to talk and, and to prepare. This week, I, I realized how uh, working and living in the same space is so difficult. And when I walked in, Mark was looking at me, he's like, why are you, and he's like, I'm walking all over the place, I'm kind of shaking my hands out. And he goes, what's going on? And I said, I'm, it's like I walk in this place where God is, where the Holy Spirit is, and, and I just feel like uh, one of those wound up reels going the opposite way, and the, the cord is just winging out and going all over the place, and I'm just unwinding and feeling what God has for us. And it's just like this. When we walk through those shadows and that darkness this week, that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. So it helps us to grasp the seriousness of this week. It starts with a celebration, as we are today. But as I said, only then can we fully understand the light and hope of Easter Sunday morning. 
And so it begins with Jesus riding on a donkey, and he begins his journey into Jerusalem. And even in the midst of the praises of the crowds, he had his eye on the cross, on which he would be crucified at the end of the week. And in the hope of fully grasping Jesus' sacrifice at Calvary to embrace the hope that belongs to all believers as a result, each day we will look at the events which led up to his death. Palm Sunday. The journey begins. John writes in chapter 12, 1 through 11, six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus the man that he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Mark was served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the incense and nard, and he anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The whole house was filled with fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him said, The perfume is worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor, for he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some from her himself. And Jesus replied, Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they have flocked to see him, and also to see Lazarus, the man that Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too. For it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. Having walked all the way from Galilee, he sent two disciples in search of a donkey for him to ride into the city. Two miles outside of Jerusalem, he gave them specific instructions on as to what to look for. A donkey tied there and a colt with her. And they were to untie them and bring them to Jesus. And he must have sensed their hesitation because he told the disciples, if anyone said anything to them, they were to tell them that the Lord had needed them and he would be sent to them immediately. Matthew 12, 1 goes on and says, as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage and the Mount of Olives. And Jesus sent two of them ahead. Go into the village over there, and as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on the donkey, riding on the donkey's John chapter 21 verses 1 through 3 records it this way. It says the disciples did exactly as they were instructed and brought both the donkey and the colt. They laid their coats on them and then sat and then sat on the coats. Jesus and his disciples began to walk to Jerusalem, which was about two miles away. The road they would have traveled over was the Mount of Olives, down a deep descent and into Jerusalem from the east side. And then in Matthew 23, Matthew recorded, he says, tells us that his tells us that his is the first time that Jesus came to Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This would have been the first day of the week, Sunday. 
Passover was the time every good Jew went to Jerusalem. The city was crammed with visitors. Some had heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They wanted to see him, but many may have also thought that they may see Lazarus, who Jesus had raised from the dead. John 12, 17 says, Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to see him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. The multitudes were convinced that the long-awaited Messiah had come, and they lined the road proclaiming that Jesus was the Messiah. And at the same time, Pharisees were plotting to kill Lazarus. Because of his story, many Jews were believing in Jesus. In John 12, 9-11, it says that when all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus. The man that Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too. For it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. The religious leaders had been stalking Jesus throughout his ministry, looking for something to accuse him of. But despite their best efforts, people were being healed. Their demons were cast out. And many were believing. The Pharisees were powerless to stop it by any of the usual means. Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the crowd was looking to Jesus as the deliverer, Savior, Messiah, God's anointed one, who had come to rescue them. They were looking for a king who would restore the kingdom to the times of King David and to wipe out their enemies. Many spread their coats in the road. Others cut palm branches and laid them in the road. Throwing coats in the path of someone was an act of homage and submission. Then John says they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. John 12, 13, Hosanna means save, or he saves, or salvation. We call the Sunday before Easter Palm Sunday because of that verse, and we still celebrate it today. Palm branches were used to celebrate a victory. In the culture, when a king rode on a horse, it was a sign of war. When a king rode on a donkey, it was a sign of peace. Jesus entered Jerusalem not as some conquering king, but as the prince. Luke records that the religious leaders tried to stop the celebration. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And I tell you, he replied, If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Luke 19, 39-40 says, Little did the crowds know that the real victory was yet to come. Rather than ride in on a donkey, their king would ride in on a white horse. And see, that was a foretold of Revelation. In Revelation 19, 11 through 16, it says, Then I saw the heaven open, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fiery wrath of God. Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. So today is Palm Sunday. It is officially the start of what we now call 
Holy Week, and it marks Jesus' final agonizing journey to the cross. It was the beginning of the last week of Jesus' life here on earth. And it, it's an interesting day. The day of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, as prophesied in Zechariah 99. Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The entering in this way emphasized the humility that was to characterize the kingdom that he proclaimed. It was a festive time with a parade, a parade route strewn with palm branches and the crowds waving palm branches and proclaiming Jesus to be the Messiah. The same crowds that proclaimed him king during the parade turned on him and mocked him just five days later. They had heard his sermons. They had been fed with loaves and fishes. They were healed of their diseases and delivered of their demons. But as the week went on and things began to change, so did they. Their cries of Hosanna, or he saves or salvation, they turned to shouts of a very different kind. Crucify him, they would shout. Never in history has there been any event so promising that ended in such despair. So as you celebrate Palm Sunday and begin to walk through the events of Holy Week, remember these two things. If God is in something, it is significant, despite the outcome. If God is in it, it's significant, because it doesn't matter the outcome. He is there. He's already prepared it. Mark and I have said this many times before. He's already there. We just need to listen for him. And number two, just because something doesn't appear to have a happy ending isn't proof that God was not behind it. We have not yet seen the final ending. The journey has just begun. Let's go to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your name. Thank you that you hold the keys over death. That by your might, Jesus was raised from the grave. Paving the way for us to have new life with you. Thank you that you have a plan. That you made a way. For us. Lord, we come before you today and we confess our need for you to refresh us and to make us new again. We ask that you renew our hearts, renew our minds, and renew our lives for the days ahead. We pray for your redemption for us. Keep your words of truth planted firm within us and Help us to keep focused on what is pure and right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. And when the enemy reminds us where we have been, sending his lies and attacks our way, we trust that your voice speaks louder and stronger, reminding us that we are safe with you and that your purposes and plans for us will not fail. We ask that you would be our defense and our guard, helping our way clear, removing the obstacles, and covering the pitfalls. Lord, lead us on your level ground. Shine your light in us and through us and over us to be a light to our world. And may we make a difference in this world for your glory and for your purposes. Set your way before us and may all of your plans succeed. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and your healing. Thanks be to you, God, for your indescribable gift of everlasting life of your Son, Jesus. To you be the glory and honor on this 
day, this Palm Sunday, and forever. In Jesus' name. This ends our online portion of our service for today. I'm sorry. Oh. Whoops. Mark got ahead of himself. <laughs> got too bad. Uh, so as we enter into our time of communion this morning, it's a reminder of us of exactly what we talked about here this morning. About Jesus and his mission on earth was to restore all men to God. Restore in us a right relationship with God. To take our sins on himself. Become fully human. Die a human death on a cross. And then to be resurrected. Having that power over sin and death. Being resurrected. And being set before the Father. So as we come through this week and this holy week. And as we go through their communion. The Eucharist becomes very, very, very important for us. Because this is... The meaning of communion. This is why we celebrate communion each time we gather together. As a remembrance of the sacrifice. As a remembrance of taking on the sins of the world. And being victorious over sin and death. And on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And he broke the bread and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Likewise, later in the meal, he took the cup and he had filled the cup and he, after he had blessed it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. And each time that you take of this bread and drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me, the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us, you and I together. So as we partake of our communion today, we partake of the body of Christ that was broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Now we come to our time of the prayer of the people. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here this morning. And uh, so this is our time to share with one another or God sightings or prayers that might be needed. Does anyone want to speak? Here's my uncle. Twin brother, he's in the hospital. Might not have long. Okay. What's his name, Diane? Bill. Bill.
and enjoy how beautiful they are and God's work, because it is just a beautiful thing that he does. He has all these beautiful flowers that he makes for us to enjoy, and um, they give us peace and calmness in our hearts, and the, the fragrances are all different, and they're just amazing in my mind. So that's a God sighting for me. So um, let's, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the beauty of this earth. You created all things for us to enjoy. Help us to be faithful to you, O oh God. Help us to read your word in faith believing and confess that you are God and forgive us of our sins. We ask for healing for Bill and his body. We ask for healing for my husband Steve, his brother Larry, and my sister-in-law Jamie. And um, I ask that you hear our words. I ask for healing for Lori's knee and for um, Terry's shoulder. You are God. Help us to never give up on you, for you never give up on us. You never sleep. You're always with us. And sometimes we don't deserve you, but you died on the cross to save us from our sins. So in faith believing, let us read your word, Lord Jesus, and let us open up our hearts and cry out to you and ask you for the healing in our bodies, because we know that you are listening. You are a great God and a great comforter in times of distress. So hear our prayer, O Lord, and thank you for all things. we close out our online portion of the service today, uh, let us be reminded of God's faithfulness, of God's blessings that he gives us each and every day. And as, as I was listening to your prayer this morning, I, uh, I have to agree, you know, it, it, it is just wonderful. Take the time to look at the wonderful world that God has presented us with. Yes, we've got problems. Yes, there's issues. But the beauty, the intricacy of God's plan, and uh, you just look at the flowers and look at the. We, we brought some new flowers in today, and here we have some roses up in front as well. But take time to smell the flowers. I mean, take time to look at God's world that He has built for each and every one of us. Um, a lot of times we get so caught up in the busyness of our lives and the busyness of our days. That we fail to stop to take a look and take in the blessings to receive the gifts that God has meant for us and to give us. And yes, we got, we got a lot of things going on all the time, but stop and take in that beauty of God. Smell that fragrance of the glory of God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we come before you right now and we just thank you for this opportunity to gather freely and openly in your presence. We thank you for being here with us in this very room at this very time. Lord, we look to the opportunities that you've laid before us in this ministry and we just marvel at the gifts and at the way things come together. And Lord, sometimes it just seems impossible to us in the natural that we could be able to do these things but see lord you are a supernatural god we serve a supernatural god and you're not set up by the limitations of us personally we praise you thank you for that lord. we ask for supernatural healing 
on these people that we lifted up in prayer today and that we lift up in prayer through our prayer ministry each and every week. Lord, we, we know that you have them in your care and comfort and that you're guiding the caregivers and the physicians that you blessed with that training, with that gift of healing, Lord. And we claim those things today. We claim a healing on our land. We claim a healing on this city. Lord, help us be your hands and feet to bring your word to a broken world. Lord, enable us, embolden us, empower us to do your work, to claim the truth of your word, to bring hope and healing to this land. Thank you, Lord God, that you give us the opportunity to explore your word, to know what you have set before us and what you set into motion thousands of years ago is still an active promise today. Let the blessings and the gifts and the promises that you made endure forever in and through you. Thank you, Lord God. And these things we 